Thank you for the folks who bought training and thank you for the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Crew. Right now, inflation is a monster. Inflation is tearing household budgets apart. But this is one of the things that I'm seeing. As you saw, as predicted, that after the election, the economy would start to crash. Crypto, ex Bitcoin especially, experienced a $4,000 drop in less than 24 hours. Now, there is FTX. And right now, you have a multitude of YouTubers apologizing for recommending that you get into crypto, especially FTX. Now, I have been the only one on record that has assiduously said, do not invest in cryptocurrency. Now, we're getting more and more people, and this is what I feel is gonna happen, and this is an economic truth, that the further we get into the depression, the recession, and the more that these assets drop in price, that many more people will start to say the same thing. Because this is my thesis. For you, as an average American, an average American is someone that makes between thirty and $50,000 per year, single person income. You, as an average person with an average income, do not make enough money to invest in real estate, to invest in stock market, to invest in cryptocurrency, to create a life changing sum of money in a short period of time. And if you're a person with average income, it's kind of a stretch that you would actually become a millionaire in 20 or 30 years. These are economic truths that I'm spitting here because we're in a point where the curtain's about to go up and you're about to see the wizard be exposed because we're coming to the part like I predicted that the economy would start to crash big time right after the election. And Joe Biden might be a one term president, especially if Trump runs because I'm in Georgia and there was a serious race between Warnock and Herschel Walker. I saw equally bad ads about both of them, but it was an extremely tight race where they're going to have a runoff next month. So once again, there's politics. And I was having a conversation the other day with some people and you know, I'm not going to say that these people are, you know, stupid or anything. I'm going to say that the average person has not done the economic research that I have because this person was thinking that interest rates were going to come down. And because we had a period of about over a decade of low interest rates, <clears throat> because the monetary policy supported that, that many people feel. And I also started to educate them. I was like, you remember when GE was a large company? Where's GE right now? You remember when IBM was a large company? Where's IBM right now? See, and someone left a comment. All assets do not bounce back. This is an economic truth. And this is an economic truth that we're going to see in the next 10 years. Many of the largest companies, some of the biggest stock positions in America will not be what they are today, 10 years in the future. History is a guide to this. Literally, I want you to think if you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, what were the biggest companies when you were in your 30s? And go ahead and see where those companies are today. Competition is rampant, especially in the corporate space. But once again, we're in a point where the reality of the situation is coming home. We're going to see 
a lot of economic truths as we go into this depression. Make no mistake about it. We're already in a recession. That's already done. The next step is a depression and we're going to have runaway inflation. The Fed is going to, can, I, I predict in 2023, we will see interest rates of 10%. And this will not stop people from buying houses. But interestingly enough, and this echoes what I just said about the average American. Right now, we have more renters than we do homeowners. Let me say that again. Right now, we have more renters than we have homeowners. In the 70s, home ownership was about 70%. So right now, and this is because home ownership has gotten out of reach of the average American. There are some places you can get a house for 250,000, but they're in places that people don't wanna live. So the average price of a house adjusted for the recent price cuts is still over $300,000, which with 10% with down is 270, which is gonna leave you a mortgage of over $2,000 per month. If you're the average American making 30 or even 50, it's gonna be pretty hard to afford a $2,000 per month mortgage or $24,000 a year in mortgage payments. So these economic truths are gonna keep coming, they're gonna keep coming, they're gonna keep coming. And just like a lot of people recognized when I said that Bitcoin was gonna crash and it was gonna get down to 16,000, I had people literally lined up to bet me that it was not gonna go any lower. I got a question for you. Why do you believe in a currency that someone made up in their basement more so than the economic realities that are flying in your face? You see it when you go to the gas station. You see it when you go to the grocery store. You see it with your rent. You see it with what's happened to housing. These are things that are right in your face, yet for some reason, you have a belief in something that was made up by someone in their basement. Going forward, we're going to see a very large correction. Going forward, we're going to see a lot of economic pain. This is just the beginning because even with the housing correction, the prices shot up so much over the last two years that the house, let's say a house went up 40%. Now there's been a price cut of 5%. We're still 30% above where we were two years ago. So it's kind of like someone stuck a, a dagger in your side, nine inch dagger, and they put all nine inches out. Then they took six out and it's like, are you okay? It's still the same thing. You still have a dagger in your side. So going forward, what is going to happen in these economic jurors? Because like, once again, there are many outlets that refuse to pronounce that we in the United States or in America are in, in a recession. They keep saying the recession is coming in 2023. We're currently in a recession right now based upon the technical indicators. But once again, these are the economic lies that you're being told to keep you at peace. Because here's the thing, and I, I was just thinking about it. Just going over this conversation I had with these two gentlemen and their belief systems, I am thinking that if people really knew how bad it really is, there would be revolts in the streets. There would be an uprising. And this is one of the reasons that you're fed this constant dose of economic lies. Right now, we're, we're, there's a lot of talk about an impending 
food shortage, which goes right in hand in hand, because this this is something I believe has some legs to it, because fertilizer, which is used to grow crops, has been in short supply for about two years. So with less fertilizer, yes, cr less crop yields. So I can see a food shortage. Now, does this mean that you're going to go to the grocery store and there will be absolutely nothing on the shelves? Absolutely not. You may temporarily be not able to get some of your favorite foods and you may have to wait a few weeks or months and they'll come back. But one of the things and this this is like with the the looming diesel crisis, the diesel shortage. Um, this United States of America went through the worst economic period called the Great Depression. There was no Social Security. There was no. Uh, FDIC there was none of the safeguards that we have today and even going through that harsh economic reality the country kept moving it kept pumping so I'm getting ready to say something because um, I've, I've made a lot of changes recently if you're looking for the male content channels you will not find them because I have decided to um eliminate that and I recently I was deleting all right here's some facts for you if you have multiple YouTube channels on one Gmail account and you want to delete one of the YouTube channels you might find yourself in the situation I found myself in I cannot access the corporate game from the Gmail login can't get it and that's not really because once again I was kind of thinking of getting rid of it too because I'm going to focus, you know, because I renamed B School for Hustlers to Corporate Game and I have this channel. And what I'm going to do is start focusing on building businesses, business only content. Because here's something that you need to hear. If you are the average American with an average income of thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year, there is nothing that you can do from an investment standpoint that is going to make you wealthy at any point in your life. This is an economic truth. There's nothing you can do. I mean, go ahead and run the numbers of investing literally you would have to invest $300 per month for close to 50 years. So what's the solution? We need to alter our incomes. You need to start a business. You need to make more money. And that has been my thesis. And I'm getting ready to sharpen that thesis because right now, remember what I said during the Great Depression, business kept going. Wells Fargo became one of the largest banks during the Great Depression. And so did J.P. Morgan, which is known as Chase. So for the smart, for the active, there will be opportunities in these dark times. But they're not going to come to the lazy. They're not going to come to the folks who are trying to hack success. Now, what do I mean when I say hack success? There is a ton of YouTube content that is literally telling you that you can make five, ten thousand dollars per month, twenty thousand dollars per month and work one to ten hours per week. That's hacking success. And that's not a real thing. It's not a real thing, because if you're the average American and this is about proximity, there was a guy in Wall Street bets who raised twenty five million dollars. And I'm making a, a distinct point. 20 year old kid was able to raise 25 million dollars now that tells me a lot about his circle his circle has nothing but money his circle is dripping money jay morrison with the tulsa fund who has a youtube channel instagram channel been on vlad a lot of people know who this guy is the most he could raise was twelve thousand with a public persona yet this guy that I honestly don't even know his name. He literally, from a handful of investors, raised $25 million. So the average American is not in proximity to wealth. 
They don't know people who literally have two, three, four, five million in the bank. And if you're like, hey, I have this business idea and would you give me two million dollars? OK, sure. That is not the situation for the average American. The average American is in a situation where literally if he looks to his left, he looks to his right. Virtually everyone on his level is in the same situation. So there's not a lot of money there for, for the average American to transcend their social upbringing. You got to start a business. That is your only hope. I know there are many people out here preaching fire. There was a girl who called into our rich journey and asked how much money did she need to invest for 10 years to reach a million dollars. And they told her the truth. She needs to invest 6,300 bucks or $70,000 per year. And if you did that for 10 years, you've invested 700, which means if you look at an investment calculator, your money wasn't really working that hard. The reason that you had a million dollar portfolio was from contributions, not appreciation. And you know, she's going to have to start a business because I want to assure you, I listened to her voice and I can tell from her voice, the way that she speaks, the way she conducts herself, she ain't even making $50,000 a year, let alone 140, which would give her the ability to invest 70,000 a year for the next 10 years. Now, one of the things that you have to understand and I'm speaking to the people who think that as an average person with an average salary of 30 to $50,000 that you can somehow achieve fire. I'm here to tell you that it's an economic lie. You do not have enough money. You don't believe me? Go to Google, find an investment calculator and start running models of investing 200 and 300, $400 a month and at a interest rate of 10% and see what you come up with in 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years. See, one of the big issues is everybody wants what we experienced during the pandemic. They want time freedom. They want the ability to do what they want to do with their time and they want to have the money to do it. And I totally understand that because that's my current situation. I have the money to live my life on my terms and do what I want to do. And this is one of the reasons that the male content had to go. Um, I'm getting ready to get extremely focused on teaching people how to start businesses and make money. The focus is about to get intense because I personally know that's what it's going to take. I was a product of a single mother. I grew up in a working class neighborhood. Business is what helped me transcend. And I know a lot of people is going to talk about, well, a lot of businesses fail. OK, if you're making thirty thousand dollars a year and you're investing, you will fail to become a millionaire. How about those apples? How about that? Cash me outside. So we're going to start because I'm getting ready to redo everything. I'm getting ready to I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. I'm getting ready to rename B school for hustlers. I got to figure out how to do it before I start doing stuff because I've integrated with my payment processor and I need to get guidance from them before I make the name change. And I'm getting ready to revamp courses and redo everything. I'm getting ready to redo everything because here's the thing. I know for a fact that starting a business and becoming successful with that business will change your economic life. And I know a lot of people are into these economic hacks, these economic hacks, these um, shortcuts to wealth. And as you will see with Sam Bankman Freed, who was a billionaire for two years through cryptocurrency. Today, they filed bankruptcy. The guy was a billionaire for two years. Jeff Bezos has been a billionaire since 19, since 2000.
thousand. And Amazon has lost a lot of money and laid off people. And Jeff Bezos has lost millions. But Jeff Bezos is still hundreds of millions of dollars to the plus side on the billionaire status column. Once again, products, services, businesses, this is what's going to keep the economic wolf from your door. So once again, based upon my thesis, if you're an average American making average income, your only out is to start a business. Now, what was that going to look like? Number one, you will be working much harder than you're working now. Facts. Number two, does that go on forever? No, it's literally going to go on for a few years. And then you set your business because this is where the new training is going to come in. We're going to set it up where you're going to work really, really hard for three to five years. No doubt about it. And then we're going to set it up where we can automate our business and then hire people to run that business while we sit at home and chill. So this is one of the things because uh, I'm getting ready to send an email out to all of my students and it's going to be long and I'm going to work on that tonight because we're getting ready to get active. We're getting ready to get busy because if you are one of those people and I see it in the comments like you do not need a lot of money to start a successful business. It helps, but it is not necessary if you're willing to put in the work. You could literally start a million dollar business with that thousand dollars that you have in your pocket right now. Now, is it going to become a million dollar business overnight? No, it may take 10 years. But I want you to think if you start a business today at the age of 30 and 10 years from now and you're 40, you have a million dollar business. What is your life going to look like? It's going to look damn good. So let's get active. Let's get busy. And let's stop listening to these economic lies. Joe Biden, United States of America is in a recession with your lying ass.